So I just want to harp on the Usagi train one last time for one last little scene. Um, oh god, it's in the back background. Hold on. Yeah! Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah! Okay, here. So like. we don't really see this individual, but this is just one frame of like, I think it's like an like an eight frame page. Mm. But so we basically have a challenge. And even though we only see an arm and a sword of our antagonist, um, it still <laughs> takes up a majority of the freaking image. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to pull this one up um, because I, I kind of knew by this point that we, you know, we just be re-harping on a lot of other stuff but I wanted to bring up an animation thing that this scene reminded me of despite being a still which is um, I don't remember if it was secondary action or if you actually have such a thing as tertiary action but so we have the establishing the establishment of wind via our protagonist ears the mm -hmm. weird I don't know what kind of a plant that is but the plant but then also the leaves, the five leaves that are just kind of coming in between the two characters. And I thought that that was just a really cool little, like, the artist didn't need to do that, but that he just threw that in there just to be like, yeah, there's wind, stupid. <laughs> um, yeah. And to define for those people that don't know as much about animation terms, the primary action is what what is moving. Like if you, uh, and in this, the arm moved forward and is stable. Secondary action is supporting elements that are connected to the primary action. And there's a lot of things that if you divide up the scene could be primary things like uh, the bam, uh, like I'm gonna call them bamboo shoots cause that's what I think they are. But in the background, the bamboo shoots like swaying is a primary action. Um, uh, the the um the figure in the background them standing straight up primary action the figure in the foreground thrusting the sword forward or holding the sword forward primary action secondary actions are the bamboo leaves moving the the figure's ear hair uh cue <laughs> thing moving the clothing the the leaves and the four figures like sleeve moving mm -hmm. and the primary actions in these set up conflict. Um, conflict of person carrying the sword out, the sword that is bigger saying like, this is the challenge. And I am challenging you and the angle is moving toward and into the figure in the background. That person's stance is upright and leaning just a little bit to towards the sword so saying that i will stand up against this and then all the secondary action of the wind moving is about one drawing our eye to the expression so that we can read you know what is this character thinking about this sword about this challenge about the looming overall story that's going to happen but the other thing that this secondary action things do is they tell a story about the immensity of the challenge that's going to be happening um, is that everything is going to be, for the most part, against this figure, but this figure is still going to stand up against it. So it's actually, it's, I don't know, it's beautiful, and I love it, and it's a lot of little subtle things like that that I think are very interesting uh, in fight scenes. Um, oftentimes in fight scenes, it is about, you know, who's, who's, how do you draw attention to their expression, and what is their expression, and then what are those elements that are starting to play effect on the character that they're either fighting against or being wrapped up in. That is entirely boring and not interesting <laughs> to watch in a lot of, it for me, in a lot of real fights, is that it's so neutral that you don't notice that the storytelling is really, it's about surprise when someone when somebody loses and like i guess it's the surprise of like oh man he took a hit oh man he took a hit oh man that guy gave him a hit back but those are the few moments that you do see a hit that like that you do see the hit that you notice the wind up and you notice 
the hit and that when the hit hits there's a follow through of like a reaction of the guy like kind of falling back a little because the the punch really uh, like landed on them yeah the um the last thing that i want to mention about this image is that the other reason why i pulled it up was because um it's a good example of the things that i that um kind of put my mind at ease whenever i think like oh man like i'm you know, I'm I'm never going to be like a you know I, I can never stand up as an artist to any of these other people. Um, the the consistency of this of the style is really good in this one, but um, you know the fact that the 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 sword isn't like highly detailed. The the hands aren't like you know they're not the yeah, you know they're not, they're, they're not the most anatomical like book reference looking things at all but it's still you know it works and so it um the the even with its proportions the sword handle is actually the one thing that impress is that that makes that gives me the most joy um in the fact that if you know if, if that hand is the way that it is there is still a half a hand in between a space in between where technically the left hand of our antagonist character like should go and that's that's generally correct for most katana and mm. that made me so happy to see <laughs> I, was <just> like, <laughs> I was like yes there's actually space because it's so it's so easy to forget like the dis like the the blade is really important because that's the thing that most people's eyes kind of immediately go to it's like oh flashy and that thing you know that ends deadly but the handle is really important also because it depends you know it depends on if it's like too sm if it's too small or if it's you know if it's just the right length or if it's just a you know if it's just a nagamaki or something mm. and you know you just gotta um the the design is really important when you're portraying like what the dude is holding and to kind of let it make sense to the viewer also because if it's just all over the place then it's like you don't really know what's going on in this scene is is he wielding a spear is he wielding a sword is it one-handed is it two-handed um, yeah i don't know i think that, uh, like little nerd moments <laughs> that's chelsea true um and then the last thing that i wanted to transition to was exactly that which was um what you were saying earlier about the emphasis on things, you know, impacting and seeing that um, other uh, that that follow through action and the one scene that gets picked apart the most um, as being the most impressive for the I guess I don't know why, but um, in the anime Naruto there is a really early scene in which. Um, both of our protagonists i don't really know what sasuke counts as anymore um in the Boy early bitch. episodes but um so you know so eventually they they end up they end up having this you know penultimate fight yes mm -hmm. everyone's been waiting for this for i don't know by that time it's like what 125 episodes or something um I think it might be sooner than that so maybe it's like in the 85 range but anyways i digress um the one scene that they that they that gets picked apart the most as being one of the most impressive visual things to have happen within that year that that scene came out mm -hmm. is um sasuke is kind of getting up off, so the so let, let's get rid of the idea that this is set in realism because A, they're fighting on water by this point. So there should be no friction. A, there should be no friction. And B, gravity's not a thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, so Sasuke is, you know, getting up off of his knees after recovering from some barrage by um, one of Naruto's um, techniques and stuff. And Naruto zips in to take advantage of this sort of factor and starts just wailing on his on his torso area and with each punch you know you can also see that secondary you know that secondary action of the force of that punch coming out of the back of of sasuke yeah and it just you know and it just kind of keeps going to this idea that everyone's had in their head when they were a child <laughs> you know that oh man that would be so cool if i could just punch this um this punching bag and just kind of keep punching it until it you know it just kind of keeps going and then it ends with a kick and um, Sasuke goes flying across this lake surface. I would like a poll of that to see if that's what everyone had in their heads as a child, but sure. 
I mean, I wish I could do that. Have you never put like I don't know? I, you know, you I think, and I are weird people, but sure. I think it's yeah. I want to see Sarah say that she that's what she wanted. <laughs> Did she use a punching bag as a child? <laughs> so every kid with a punching bag wanted oh. that. <laughs> well, they didn't have to have it, but just access one. Because I don't know, that was the thing that went into my head. It was just like you know, I punch this thing, it's gonna swing out, it's gonna come back and. Oh man, I wonder if it's possible to just like keep punching this thing until I can eventually like, get it to the ceiling. But, you know, gravity doesn't exactly allow for that. Or, you know, muscles. <laughs> Unless you're in Naruto world. Well, just this is on. true. Okay. Um, so. But yeah, so that, you know. Do I need to look up a picture of this? Are you going to put a picture up? Uh, Do I kind of know what you're talking about? But. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of getting oh, lazy okay. cuz it's I'm I'm just kind <laughs> just kind of getting lazy as I'm wrapping everything up sort of thing. Um but uh, I'm also doing the bad I'm also doing a bad thing in assuming that most people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um and if not it's like really easily searched. You could just do Naruto v Sasuke and it's like if not the first one, it's like the third one. <laughs> um I'm just going to double check that claim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I found pictures. Yeah, but they're still like kids. Yeah, second one <laughs> in that case. Wow, that's weird. Your Google brought up some different stuff than my Google brought up. Stuff. I just wrote an auto fight scene. But yeah, so um when they were still when they were still itty bitty kids, um that's the one. Yeah, see? There's so many people that have picked that apart and... God, I hate that picture. But it shows exactly <laughs> you know, well, what we are talking about. There's this big giant windup. It is readable on the staging of the scene, what is happening. And that, I mean, they are, I mean, he's reeling from the last thing that happened. So we can see like the follow through that happened. I like I like to imagine as a headcanon that the animators that worked for Dragon Ball Z are also like they share animators between um, all the other anime as well, because um, I feel like there's a lot of techniques that were show that were you know showed off in this episode mm -hmm. um, that sort of began to leak into other um other long you know long running anime as well so um as far as like high quality fight scenes go um things like trigun and cowboy bebop i kind of have a high expectation for and um only because their their episode runtime is 25 episodes you know so they have they have a deliberate storyline that they want to tell off they have a budget that they've allocated for this and they have a really good team of animators and so um let's do this plus those two things relatively fall into the same lines of physics that we all know and love mm -hmm. um whereas naruto bleach um dragon ball z these things have episode run times of into the 300s um didn't Naruto break a thousand at one point? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I st I stopped I stopped like adequately paying attention to the numbers a while ago. But um So it it's kind of so when you know when you have that many episodes and you and the animators are expected to crank those out like at least what once every two weeks or something i don't know mm -hmm. what the release date is for those anymore but yeah. you know so so it is kind of understandable there is a level of understanding that you know there are some shortcuts to put a negative term on things there are some shortcuts that need to kind of be figured out in order to kind of portray the scene and portray it adequately but also move on so that the rest of the episode can get finished so that then you can jump to the next episode and get that done yeah you know but once once whatever team of naruto did that 
I felt like very slowly, you know, that sort of um, animation thing where they were able to portray all these really high, like they were able to portray fight scenes that were supposed to be happening at a high, um, at a high speed, but so that the viewers, human eyes were still able to see that without having to do the, the you know, the old 1995 Dragon Ball Z, like, we're just going to put a bunch of horizontal lines and pretend that that's punching type of, type mm, of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just interesting looking at not just the progression of the Naruto episodes, but, you know, in comparison to all the other anime as well, just to see the evolution of what they, you know, what they dared to do in their, in their animation. And then also, (laughs) and also try to do it for hundreds you know and try to do that same technique but for hundreds of episodes like that blows my mind <laughs> so that that still's not that bad it shows a you know it shows del- it shows a deliberate action and then there's a reaction to it yeah i mean it probably started like i can tell their hair is different but like i know that it started out with flurry of blows where there's no reaction (laughs) still the language in this one is favoring uh the figure on the left and his body language on the right is uh is compromised uh and then it was switched to the power shot that's easily (laughs) readable um which is i don't know i've not been overly surprised in it but something that i think um I'm pretty sure, as far as I've been able to see, is that uh, Naruto uh, and their fight scenes uh, make heavy use of um, not not exactly, but like using reference of fight scenes. There is um, the the proportions of the figures change, and then there's a lot of like uh, looseness of detail that happens on the figure in the few fight scenes that I remember watching. Um, so that they could watch some human actual movements of punches and kicks. Mm. Uh, and then they, they, like, they took some of those raw things and then used their fight choreographers um, or animators to you know, think of how can we put two extra punches in there? How can we make that wind up look realistic? How can we make the, uh, um, the reaction of getting hit feel dramatic so the audience feels it? Uh, so that 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 back and forth of using some things that are realistic and then embellishing it on it to tell a story is is very important. And kind of like how you were nerding out about like the uh, the wrapping and the handle of the katana, uh, and how we were pointing out all how all the wind was moving in that scene to tell a story more than just just the main thing. Mm-hmm. I think most people get the main thing and if you do an, uh, a relatively accurate job of display uh, of um displaying that main that main action so using a reference of an actual human fight and how they move but then you embellish all the other things i think that that feels really good um whereas if you're too realistic on all the small details but the, like the 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 main action the main thing that we're supposed to see is just really fake I think, I think we feel a little bit cheated, but it feels do too, you, too strange. Do you have a Do you have an example off the top of your head? I don't have the top of my head. Let me see. Um, what are all these? Ah, some of those really? are. Uh... So this is a, this is a thing that I hate. Not that I think that this is like the actual. Uh, animators and stuff. Uh, well, like it might be, maybe not, um, or a copy of. I hate it when people punch fists. <laughs> that is such a hard thing to do. The, like how, like just a poll out to there uh, of like people watching or listening or even uh, or talking about this. How many people have missed a high five? That's happened to everybody. Hitting another person's fist is ridiculous and stupid. And you can make the argument that I'm no saying, but it's just, I don't think that they're trying really hard, two people together to hit fists. It's dumb, stupid thing. 
Although I had a friend, uh, which Tyler knows her, uh, Stephanie. And Stephanie, this goes out to you because I called you stupid when we talked about this before. But she had like that like martial arts fight thing where she was like, you know what I really always wanted to do? I wanted to catch a fist with my hand. Like that's a dumb, stupid move. <laughs> And well, yes, I do know a couple of techniques that can work in that scenario. It's so meh. Hey, man, whenever anyone signs up for their first class of fill in the blank, <laughs> fill in the fill in fill in name of martial art here, they always have that one idea in their head of I want to do this, and I want to be really good at doing this. <laughs> Yeah, punch punching bag all the way up into ceiling with combination <laughs> seven. I mean, how else do you store your punching bags? It's a workout and you're cleaning up your house at the same time. <laughs> uh let me think. Um mm -hmm. I feel like there's a fair amount of kung fu fight scenes. I'm like trying to jog my memory, just like looking through like random things. Like, which one did I dislike the most? <laughs> dislike? Um... Nah, I can't think of it. But I think I don't know. It's hard to say because a lot of these are are high end movies. Um, uh, or I mean, they had they had people, professionals to a degree that um, that had a lot of input of what's good, what you, uh, what you you should add that's realistic, what things you should add that's uh, just good storytelling. That um, there were a lot of those. There were a lot of those uh, '80s like '80s kung fu films, you know, where Jackie Chan was trying to promote. Um, I don't know if it was so much promotion but he got hired to do um some like snake style um i'm still going to use the word promotion even though that's probably not what it was you know but it was like snake style eagle claw you know and it was a movie you know and those those you know once upon a time those movies were like centered around you know us you know a style yeah and usually when they were you know off off the main off the main line sort of styles like snake and eagle um those movies tended to get or the, the depictions of those tended to get um a little i have a fight scene recommendation vash versus knives oh yeah uh even can you look that up sure why not <laughs> um but yeah those you know but i think that was the hype you know back was it the 80s i'm just gonna still say the 80s that was the that was the thing in the 80s which was you know let's find this thing i don't think i ever saw that episode like embarrassingly where he fought knives it was it was fun weird <laughs> yeah i know i, I don't know <sighs> That one, all right, like, whoever suggested that to you, maybe you're talking about wood. Uh, like, and it's a callback. I don't remember too much no. about uh, all of it. But, man, was it stupid that they had this fight scene, and they're losing, and then he remembers the voice of his friend. And it's like, just reach out and, like, grab, or, or like, yeah, reach out to friends or something. And he just, like, touches the ground and then finds, like, this guy's, like, wicked-ass do the clicking thing. There we go. <laughs> this guy's uh, <laughs> like cross gun thing just buried there. And in that moment of needing a gun to be able to defeat his like crazy brother, like tears into him. And I was, I don't know, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Cause you know what? A lot of anime was on really late when I used to watch. Yeah. Um, that's, that's probably how I'll, I'll answer that sure. last question of how did I not see it was, um, so a lot of these when when I when I was able to be exposed to these episodes it was usually at Evan's house because <laughs> he was the only person in the world that had cable <laughs> um and yeah and they would come on really late at night um 
Ryu versus Bison in Street Fighter 2. Is that Street Fighter? Th is that Street Fighter? Th what? 2? Is that Street Fighter 2 or 5? What about it? Oh, 2V. Got it. It's <laughs> a good point. Um, yeah, let's take a look at that one. One moment. <laughs> that's a fun picture. I like it. Wow, that's like <laughs> that's a um, that's like a an extreme example of the of the the one camera angle we were talking about yeah street fighter got really weird with like how muscly they wanted everybody <sighs> grab him the punch i hate it, I hate it. <laughs> so much everyone that wants to grab a punch come catch this fade i'm no <laughs> <laughs> Um, Street Fighter 2, victory. Uh, let me see if this one is eat. Where is my specific window? Oh man, he's so white in that version. <laughs> I'm taking away your, taking away your abilities real quick. Um... <laughs> Does this one look? Oh, I need a ugh. curse you transform. Ha ha. Yes. Okay. So let me take a look at this one. Make it smaller so I can. Okay. Well. Does audio like matter to you guys out there as far as this clip goes? Again, as we've mentioned, <laughs> as as you've mentioned, it's on YouTube. But um, all right, establishing. Bah! Wow, that's as anime as you get right there. <laughs> oh, that's a cool. That's a cool video game callback. Is it a callback if it's still happening? <laughs> All right. The over the show shoulder, large than higher, and thirds. Nice. They gotta get the they gotta get the video game references in, right? Ha ha ha. All right, so. So, so like story, saying, story writing wise, the fact that we've got Ryu beating on Bison right now and Bison's not really doing anything, it tells me that Bison's going to just flip the whole thing and just wreck this guy. Oh no, is this where the clip ends? Oh, I guess he beat the crap out of Ken though, right? Bro. <laughs> all right so we've got some we've got some old uh some old hollywood kind of like pans it's kind of cool to see Stabbing. but like i said a lot of those it's about that wind-up strike and then the after the strike strike 
And while there was like a couple of shots where it's like starting to connect, it's usually that after part of like where it really solidly connect. And they do that like kind of driving through the person is falling away. The strike is going even further past the person. And whatever happened in that scene was just dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that this clip in particular was so short. I need to find a larger, a longer clip. Um, let me give you back your window. Oh, I don't have anything. You can just look at my face, though. Oh. One of these things. And then I'll look for another video. Um, come here. Haha. -ha. What was what was Bison's deal? He was just like really like strong or was it the fact that he actually like was the third the other like the third person to like shoot stuff out of his body? <laughs> really? I like I think I tried to watch like one or two movies and then they just like reinterpreted like the whole story a couple times, so I don't care. <laughs> um When okay, here's here's a <laughs> Chun Li versus Vega fight was good too, but make sure you skip the Chun Li Jacks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you know TOS. Let's see if I can find that one. Um, while I'm while I'm searching though, a question that I have for you even is um, when when we were learning when we were learning um, Dao from um, Shifu Ye, you know how his 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 emphasis was always you know. You know, you hide the blade behind your behind your knee and all these other things. Um, in these sort of scenarios where you have, you know, your establishing shot like we have on the cover of Usagi, or um, I guess it would be more easily or uh, more easily depicted um, in methods like what they did in um, Cowboy Bebop. But what are some ways that you could think of that would um, be better for um, depicting like a hidden or like a concealed sort of trickery fighting style method. Hmm. Really, I I I'm a fan of uh, of the cut. Like, I like it when they do that. I I really enjoyed it and how they did it in. Uh, uh, in the Grandmaster, of uh, a lot of the times, uh, particularly in um, uh, the style that the the female character was using, which is Bagua, uh, you do a lot of hiding hand movements. You do a lot of spinning and turning around a figure, uh, and just like kind of curving at certain mov uh, movements to divert energy, um, or to build up uh, kind of your momentum in a strike. And so, if I were uh, and it's it's really I don't know I think it's shitty in a lot of uh, a, a lot of fight scenes for that is that you do have to cut into uh, their hand moving and the close up of their hand sinking into their chest building that power uh, near their like their stomach hey, thanks, and then man. uncoiling and striking and then mostly you end up seeing like you pan back out to the the usual kind of like wide continuous shot and you see like the person reacting from that from that hit um i kind of like the uh sometimes if you have like a fight scene where you do a couple of like uh uh of movements and then when the strike hit they do that like i don't know they freeze and they're like bah! and they show that hit from like three different angles mm -hmm. um like uh, if I think about like the film score and the sound, that's usually where they do like they're um, where they're like they're like da 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 da, da ba 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 like you know, and then they show that scene repeated da 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 from three different angles where they kind where you can kind of get like oh that's where that came from, like I don't mind those so much, I think those those are okay. I hate it when like the characters re-explain that I've been hiding my punches <laughs> i do twice as many punches as you expect like um i don't mind the the slowing down to show 
how a movement, oh, how a subtle shift in uh, stance, and that's usually where they, they cut to the feet, they show the shifting uh, and moving of the feet, and then they show back to the fight, uh, full fight, the wind up of, you know, person B's punch, and then the slowdown where you, uh, and close up where you see the fist just slide past that figure as that person like turns. And then they, they usually cut oh. to another scene of like both people's expressions of like where the py- uh, power dynamic shifts between like, you thought that punch got me, but it didn't. You know what's a, um, a good example of that is um, um, Samurai Shampoo with um, the, the battle on the island, the final battle with the dude with like the, the chain, like the chain sickle. You remember that fight? Mm, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, cuz it's more or less like it's not so much of a hidden thing, but it's like this it's this long setup for something that the um the enemy doesn't see, right? So when eventually when he tries to bring it back, then instead of, you know, instead of it coming and benefiting him to attack his, you know, attack his prey, he comes back and attacks himself and it's just like Ah, and it's just this, you know, and, um, and I think they do establish it how you say they did. It was, um, it was a bunch of little different scene cuts to see where our protagonist is, where our antagonist is, and where this end of the weapon currently lies. And then everything kind of comes together. You know, they pull the string taut, and everything comes together. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that I like that I think is uh, a decent one, and they make use of it kind of. Uh, a lot is like the 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 goon battle I guess in like a lot of like kung fu movies where the one person fights the horde and uh, that allows that character to one just look really awesome uh, two to talk about uh, press of, uh, like preservation in like a fight because usually if you're very careful to watch it and this was pointed out to me uh, in like really it was a Jackie Chan uh, documentary, but his character gets hit a whole lot. Like, um, but even if you watch like, uh, like Ong Bak, Ip Man, uh, or The Raid, if you haven't seen The Raid, awesome movie, is that there's a lot of exchange of punches here and there um, and strikes uh, and you start seeing people go down, but all you need is one close up of uh, like a strong reaction to a movement and then like showing that like I did you know like you know hide my punches behind certain things and that one person reacted to it and then you just let the the whole mass fight happen and people just start falling here and there and the mind just puts in the rest and you get to appreciate like oh there are there are things that I'm not seeing that I don't know but I saw it that one time Uh, Mirage Leonardo, is it three cyborgs or is it just one? Because I'm seeing I'm seeing a couple um, I'm seeing a couple results for like three different scenes. Um, but I was just reminded from the chat that um, uh, Afro Samurai also has a has a lot of um, intricate fight scenes. Yeah, and they do, I think they do a lot. I don't know. I'd be surprised to see a fight scene that's not very good that doesn't, uh, or that's very good that's outside of those that realm. Of like kind of having a combination, letting you just kind of like see and appreciate that a combination is happening. And then doing a couple of slower, more readable uh, like shots with some close-ups to show how the people are doing those moves. Um, is there any other topics that we didn't touch on even? Or anything that anything else that came to your mind that you want to kind of toss in? Well, I mean, I kind of threw out that like the the throwing a, a weapon around or like the the gang versus one person and that person like the camera spinning around on that person's reaction to all these different things that are happening, I think is a really unique take on how to do fight scenes. Um, whereas I think, I don't know, for me, I ended it, I, I think we identified what are the key things that most fight scenes use that are pretty successful, but what's a unique fight scene 
scenario or art setup or design that you've seen oh, that you like? Oh, ninjas. Okay, sorry. So um, I'll answer that, but um, I just found that um, Devil May Cry was by um, Studio Madhouse. Well, Madhouse Incorporated. Mm. And they were the ones that did Ninja Scroll, Vampire Hunter, D, Trigun, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And the first, apparently, just the first season of One Punch Man. Who's doing it now then? Um, but yeah, um, that, that's a solid studio. Their their animation team knows how to um, structure knows how to structure a um, a fight stage real well when they want to. They're lazy sometimes, <laughs> but they they fall into those traditional anime tropes of uh, lazy animation or <laughs> limited. Well, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think every studio can really be like, you know, a no. hundred percent for you know a hundred episodes. Well, okay, so like I said, try I gun. Wish they would try <laughs> try gun twenty five episodes. Uh, season one of One Punch Man had I don't remember how many episodes. Season one, um, but yeah, not. It, I don't think it was a lot though. Season no. one, really Punch in One Punch Man. Man, kind of like I think one of the best fight scenes was against the mole people. I guess I don't know <laughs> the but, uh, the dream like the dream, dream sequence. Yeah. <laughs> like really that was the most experimental camera and body movement through almost all of it when they do that in naruto um it, i i love it what the the motion seems more real and it's about the motion and the movement of the body and the camera interacting with other things and it like cuts a lot of like in my opinion like the bullshit cut scenes of like ah, i'm gonna power punch ah, here's the punch <laughs> like, ah, I got hit. like which i mean it was solid ways to set up ca uh comic book panels but uh or stills of things but they're i don't know they're boring i believe you've just started our new uh our new, our new netflix series even in a discord window <laughs> that sounds like a terrible nightmare <laughs> um but yeah so um the the point that i wanted to kind of um just keep across though was that um you know madhouse they they um so far in their uh i need coffee <laughs> um, so far in their list is a bunch of um shows that don't really go over that 30 episode like limit Whereas um, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, I keep throwing Bleach in there, even though we didn't really ever throw up any examples on there. But um, I feel like they had potential to really like play to my visual aesthetics, but then they just kind of decided to do whatever they wanted. Um, but so, yeah, so I mean, the, the difference there again is just like one you know one I, I assume anyway i really should have i didn't know we were going to talk about this but um i should have done more research but uh you know the the one studio that only has a show that's only going to run 25 episodes you know i i would assume is a lot more efficiently planned out and their budget is more um more solid whereas the the studio that has to deal with the show that goes 365 episodes um they um you know I, I feel like their I feel like their schedule is a lot more chaotic in the sense of like, you know, hey, is is um is team B done with you know the first twenty five minutes because team C is done with the last twenty five minutes and you know um team D is you know they're they're 15 minutes off of finishing so you know we got to cut it all together and then we got to send it out before thursday comes in otherwise we're gonna have a bunch of angry children at us that's just you know kind of my assumption 21 days i've been enjoying crime drama anime oh i'll check that out yeah i've been really bad at like absorbing new or even just going back to old anime that I haven't 
finished <laughs> lately. Uh, life kind of gets in the way. <laughs> um, so my mind is fried and I've run out of graphics to really throw up even. Do you, any last, any last sort of notes? I mean, you didn't answer my question. What's the unique? Oh, bro. Right. <laughs> oh my God. But no, besides that, I, I, I don't know. We covered a whole bunch. Of <laughs> um, what was my favorite? What, 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 what again? Favorite? Uh, what is a unique like style of presenting unique fight scenes? Style. That's your um, So again, recently, um, the Legend of Hay. I don't know if it's still around because I didn't see it in the most official of manners but um, okay. they did a lot of things right in terms of portraying um, I'm going to call it magic they don't really state whether it's magic or not but when oh, didn't you talk about Avatar. <laughs> but when you when you include when you include magic in um, in a world in which you have a lot of also hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, I feel like anima animating studios go in one of two directions. Either one, they try to they keep them separately, and so you have this very like I stand here and I'm gonna th and I'm gonna establish the spell that I'm using and I'm gonna throw it at you, and it smacks you. You know, so it's it's action, you know, so it's this build up, this execution, and then resolution of the thing. And then you have the avatar style type thing, and then what kind of what Legend of Hay does also, in which you kind of um, you fuse it in with the the same body motions of a um, of a martial arts style. Um, the Legend of Hay, though, they don't really make it a part of the martial arts style, but more mm -hmm. or less it's, it's this large, it's, the, it's these large magical, um, thing, events happening from small body movements, you know? So, like, um, the dude just kind of raises up his hand and, like, three you know and three large boulders kind of come up and then he just kind of switches his hand from this open palm to the kind of this like l sort of thing and then just the iron you know just the iron um girders within these large cement blocks kind of shake themselves free and then become these like swords or whatever that launch at this like turtle or something not actually in the film i'm just making that up but that's an example of kind of these small motions that command these larger events sort of thing. I'm a big fan of either that school of thought when it comes to magic or the avatar school in which the spell is intertwined with the movement. Mm -hmm. um, so to answer your question, it's um, those kind of things where you have a fight scene that's both close hand-to-hand -hand combat but it's also this sort of larger um all of these more like macro events are happening um i guess a more compact version of that is with um in naruto again so um shippuden this time so sasuke versus killer b um we talked about this with um swords that are being wielded in places where they shouldn't in this case, um, elbow joints, neck, armpit, leg joint. Um, you know, so they're still relatively fighting in in a hand to hand, um, close quarters sort of sort of style. Mm -hmm. But the what the macro that's happening is the sword play. You know, it's all these all these swords that are happening on the periphery that are happening. And so whenever I see something like that, it you know, it blows my mind because it's something that seems like it could actually happen, but it's not. 
it, it, it hurts my mind trying to think of how to court like to choreograph that in real life and so whenever I see something like that executed correctly oh it gets it gets me going <laughs> All right. I hope Solid. that made. I hope that long answer made sense. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I get it. I, one that I wish was better, but it usually doesn't come out well. I don't have a lot of examples that I can think of that was all that great. But was like kind of the 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 first player GoPro view of in a fight scene. But so much like even I don't know in my own experiences of fights that I've been in you only kind of half remember the motions that are happening and you react to things you're not exactly sure that are coming towards you and you remember them happening like you i don't know you kind of remember blocking something <laughs> or that you did block something and that like maybe you saw and noticed that punch coming but it's like a lot of it so much of it's on instinct right so i think that's part of why that scene that fight scene style doesn't ever work in showing and depicting a fight because mm. it's like really when you throw a kick it's like <laughs> you, you miss out on the anticipation you miss out on uh, so much of the, sta uh, the staging to be able to see what happens and maybe if you're lucky you can see the um the follow through of the kick but if you're kicking properly generally you don't i don't know you don't see your leg too much you have to turn your body a lot all right so let's really let's wrap this thing up because i've kept you much longer than i probably should have um <laughs> can do you would you be able to just kind of give like four bullet points as far as like to all the artists out there four bullet points to take away from what we've discussed Number one is uh, when you're considering your uh, you, your fight scene, uh, go find that balance between between realistic and embellishment. Your embellishments should focus on telling a story, not necessarily on making uh, making it look cool looking cool is is an entirely different area uh, part of what's important is uh is telling the story that'll sell whatever attack happens number two, two um it's not about the strike as much as it is about uh the wind up and the reaction to it uh, that being said, it, I'm not talking about the person's gasping face as they're like as all the wind got sucked out of them. It's actually more of right the second right after a punch happens, how the body starts to curve in, and not the like the punch power energy that comes out of the back of the person uh, or the blood that they spit up. It's it's a subtlety of it. Uh, watch 300 again. Uh, notice that like after the guy gets hit with the shield, it's not the moment the shield connect, connects, it's just just a little as they start to fall back from it. Um, or just a little of the wind up so you can see that the person's elbow is back, but they don't have to be all the way, fist doesn't have to be full, like a whole two feet behind them. It's actually the wind up of the elbow back and then just the, the echo of something. Number three. And number three for me, um, use your camera ang uh, angles to tell a story. Uh, and when you're thinking about that story, think about who's in power, uh, where, do they uh, where do they start having an evenness, and when does it switch? And then who becomes in power at that point? Yeah, your large imposing antagonist doesn't always have to be huge and in the background. Just mm -hmm. check out this, this cover art that we've been <laughs> showing for the past like three hours. Um, Number four. Number four. Uh, Unless you weren't done with number three. Sorry. No. I mean. Okay. Number four. <laughs> I think that's weird. I challenge anyone to find out a good, a good, uh, a, a different way to interpret a fight scene. Actually, no, scratch that. Number four, somebody go get out, go out and get into a fight. 
<laughs> no, wait, I don't no, endorse no, that. Go, go get into a fight. <laughs> no. This is even star endorsed. Get into a fight. Uh, no matter what you do when you're I making art, you have to experience <laughs> what you're doing just a little bit. Just a little bit to appreciate what is there and what isn't. We here at Level 3 Studios do not endorse getting into physical altercations with random people. Even um, Star Dads. Please be it safe out be there. Uh, follow, the, follow the law and um, obey your parents. We're going to do a <laughs> find, find a volunteer. <laughs> find <laughs> someone willing to spar with you. Let's use actual vocabulary here. Okay. Um, but there is truth behind the general statement that we will not repeat um, that you generally it generally g living through those actions make it a lot uh, make it a lot more sense when you try to jot it down or if you just try to portray it having actually done it makes it a lot more clear okay so um, with that uh, next week, There will be a topic. I don't know. Um, um, that was something that you touched on on this time. I and mean, we could table this for another uh, another moment. But you were talking about like uh, a game that you did in a different class of like guessing who's the antagonist and who's the protagonist. I mean, hmm. you brought up that by silhouettes as well um, in different conversations that we've had. So and we could table that for another time. And maybe it will just be a time of complaining about group games. <laughs> and being in a, in a kitchen or a virtual kitchen who knows sweet all right and so with that um thank you for tuning in and i hope you join us next week uh maybe next week um usually around two o'clock on saturdays this has been some sort of talk show um thank you for coming on even hey Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be back with another topic later. Bye. Bye.